Hello and welcome to my presentation on interacting with medical volume data in projective augmented reality. My name is Florian Heinrich and I'm a PhD student at the University of Magdeburg in Germany. Exploring medical image data is essential for many modern surgical procedures in terms of diagnosis, planning and image-guided surgery. This volume data is usually visualized as two-dimensional image slices on conventional PC monitors and looks similar to the figure on the right. These 2D images require surgeons to build mental maps of the actual patient anatomy, which can be facilitated by three-dimensional data representations. This also enables a better understanding of spatial relations and an easier identification of anatomical or pathological structures. The concept of augmented reality, or short AR, can potentially be further helpful here. By showing relevant anatomy directly on the patient, surgeons no longer need to split their focus between spatially separated monitors and the operation site in order to make use of the augmented images and to effectively explore and manipulate it, we need appropriate interaction methods. However, typical tasks often require the manipulation of more degrees of freedom than provided by conventional methods like mouse and keyboard. In related work, more efficient techniques have been developed that allow users to control more than two DOFs simultaneously and that can be performed touchlessly. These intuitive methods are often based on natural human interaction in the form of hand or foot gestures as exemplified in the images on the right. Additionally, interaction techniques using handheld devices like the Nintendo Wii Remote were explored. Most of these techniques were developed for the interaction with image data displayed on monitors. However, methods developed for desktop environments may not be intuitive in AR systems anymore. With AR, position, orientation and the scale of image data are fixed in space, but can be modified in desktop applications. So, previous research findings may not be applicable for AR environments. This is why we compared four gestural interaction techniques with respect to their applicability for exploring medical volume data in AR. So, what exactly did we do and how did we accomplish it? We built a projective augmented reality prototype displaying a CT dataset on a phantom. Two stereoscopic projectors were used to create an immersive experience we also used the HTC Vive tracking system to track the head position of the user so that we can render all images from the right perspective. These images here give an overview of the setup. In contrast to the study, they only show monoscopically rendered images from three standard projectors. Next, we develop four interaction techniques based on related research findings. First, a concept based on hand gestures was implemented using the Mayo gesture control armband for gesture recognition. Using direct kinematics, data of two inertial measurement units attached to the user's wrist and upper arms was used to calculate the user's relative hand position. Another technique was based on foot interaction. Gestures were recognized by attaching an inertial measurement unit to the user's foot. Lifting and lowering the forefoot activated the manipulation of parameters, which were then changed based on rotations of the forefoot around the heel. Because surgical navigation systems are commonly used in image-guided surgery, a third concept enabled the manipulation of exploration parameters by mapping them to the position of a tracked surgical instrument. Mode activations were again performed using foot gestures. Finally, a controller-based method using an HTC Vive controller was implemented. Manipulation modes were activated by pressing and holding buttons. Movement of the controller in space was then mapped to changes of exploration parameters. For our upcoming study, we then decided on two typical exploration tasks that needed to be completed using each interaction technique. Basically, both tasks can be described as search tasks. First, in a windowing task, the window level and window width of the dataset needed to be manipulated so that a hidden search object, namely a screw that we placed in the CT data, became visible, like you can see in these images here. Second, a clipping task required participants to change the position and size of a clipping box so that it encapsulated the search object as closely as possible without clipping the object itself. Here, scaling and translation of the clipping box could be performed individually for each main axis. The three images here again 
show the procedure of clipping the box so that it encapsulates the screw as closely as possible. Next, the user study was planned and conducted. We were able to recruit 26 medical students with basic knowledge about medical image data for the study. Each of these participants needed to complete both windowing and clipping tasks and our four interaction techniques represented levels of the study's independent variable. During both task types, we measured the task completion time, counted the number of mode activations, with mode activation meaning the process of entering a parameter changing state, like moving the clipping box, and collected raw TLX questionnaire data to assess the subjective workload. Additionally, the clipping accuracy and windowing efficiency were measured. For the procedure itself, first the order of interaction techniques was randomized, then for each technique participants completed both clipping and windowing tasks. The order of these tasks were alternated between participants and before each trial participants could train the current setup. Afterwards, we analyzed results of both tasks individually and conducted one-way ANOVAs for each variable. Afterwards, pairwise t-tests were performed. So what did we find out? Tests on the efficiency variable of the windowing task showed no, differ showed no significant differences. Our users were able to complete these tasks with all techniques in a more or less similar fashion. However, differences showed for the other variables. Foot interaction was the slowest technique and required the most amount of mode activations. It was also perceived as the most demanding. The controller method took the least amount of time and was perceived to be the least demanding. The hand and instrument concepts ranked similarly though. It is also notably that controller concept required quite a lot of mode activations, which we suspect uh, was simply due to the fact that these activations were way more easy and fast to perform with the controller compared to the other concepts. The clipping task showed similar results. All concepts were able to fulfill the task at a similar accuracy level. Again, foot interaction was the slowest and the controller-based interaction yielded fastest results. This concept was also perceived the least demanding and required by far the most mode activations. This is again probably due to the fact that modes could be switched so easily. The hand gesture concept and instrument-based concept performed similarly well compared to another and ranked between the controller and the foot interaction technique. Next, I'd like to talk about what to conclude from these findings, but would like to note beforehand that I won't go in much detail here and gladly refer you to the paper, also linked on the site for detailed explanations. Regarding the interaction techniques, we learned that foot gestures were not that well suited to fulfill our task, which was probably due to the less amount of degrees of freedom that could be modified simultaneously. The controller worked best, as we kind of expected. However, the hand gesture and instrument-based concepts showed promising initial results for further and future research. Crucial for each technique's performance seemed to be the choice of mode activation, as could be seen at the peaks of the controller concept. We noticed that hand gestures caused unwanted parameter changes by moving the hand unwillingly. Our toe-tap foot gesture was better in this manner and should be followed in future development steps. We also want to look into voice commands, which we did not consider in this work because they seem not to be well suited for linear parameter manipulation and noisy operating rooms. Yet, as a complementary method, they may be viable mode activation alternatives. In future work, we would also like to compare our methods of projecting image data and interacting with it with more conventional methods like mouse and keyboard, as we believe such study could yield meaningful results. Also, it should be noted that our work was conducted under laboratory conditions only, so we did not consider issues with sterility or less space. Those aspects need to be addressed when transferring our work to clinical use. For example, a controller as used in our study would need to be wrapped in sterile plastic. For now, this work's take-home message is, for the exploration of 3D images in projective augmented reality, linear parameters should be modified using hand gestures or hand controlled devices, while needed fast and robust mode activations can benefit from foot gestures. With that, I'd like to show you my references for this talk and thank you for your kind attention. Please contact me if you have any questions.